Just preach? Okay. All right. That, that's fair enough. Um, if something is in the Bible once, that makes it important, doesn't it? This means yes. This means no. Yes. If it's in there one time, it's important. If it's in there twice, it's a little more important. If it's in there three times, it's a little more important. If it's in there four times, it's probably very important, isn't it? And so we need to find out what it says and what it means. Romans chapter 1, verse 17 says, For, it in, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the righteous man shall live by faith. That same quotation began in the days of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, is also in Galatians and Hebrews. So we have this statement once in the Old Testament, three times in the New Testament, that says something like this, but the righteous man shall live by faith. That's what it's, our walk with God is really all about. Faith is the key, the, the real key to everything for the believer. Coming to Christ for salvation, living our life with joy and gladness, unlocking the doors of eternity, that's what it is. If you look up in Webster, the definition of faith, it says something like this, to believe, to trust, loyalty to God, allegiance to duty. Now, I always like to know what it's not as well as what it is. Uh, P.T. Barham said, there's a sucker born to every minute. Faith is not the way to manipulate uh, what God wants us to do. It is not the way, it's not a blind leap into the dark. You know, sometimes we almost describe faith as being that blind leap in, into the darkness. It's not devotion to just any God. It is devotion to Yahweh, to the Lord, to Jesus. So if, if it's not manipulating God, if it's not uh, being gullible, if it's not a blind leap, then what is it? What is faith? Well, if you read in Hebrews chapter 11, it has a list of people there who are described in, in, in the uh, Hall of Fame room as being faithful people. If you look up in, in Hebrews 11, beginning in verse 1, it begins to talk about faith. In verse 38, it says these words of chapter 10, but by my righteousness one shall live by faith. So that's the quote from Hebrews that's there. And then he begins to talk about faith and, and it's the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. And then he has a long list of people. He lists Abel, who worshipped God. He lists Enoch, who walked with God. He listed Noah, who worked for God. He listed Abraham, who went where God told him to go. He listed Jacob, who worshipped him. He listed Moses, who was at the burning bush and then crossing the, the, the Red Sea and then taking the people up to get the Ten Commandments. This is all those people that's having faith. And then he just gave a long list of names in that same chapter of other people of, of what faith had done into their lives. Faith is that conviction. It's that belief that a statement is true and trustworthy. It is man's relationship shaped by what he does and who he belongs to. So faith, what is faith? I like acrostics. I don't know how many of you like acrostics. I like acrostics. Let's show the first acrostic up there if we could. The evangelism material has faith as an acrostic saying, forsaking all, I trust him. So when you read that, that, that that's a great statement of what faith is. Forsaking all, I trust him, meaning Christ. I trust him to be my savior. I trust him to walk with me. I, I love this statement. It's in a lot of our materials that we have handed out through the years, tracks of, of how to be saved, and it begins by telling you what faith is. Forsaking all, I trust him. 
But then we come along and we look at our hymnals or we look at our Sunday school books, and this is what it says faith is. Forgiveness available, impossible, turn, heaven. And if you want to look in your hymnal, it, it, it's, it's in there. If you want to look in your Sunday school book, it's at the beginning of it. Faith really is about forgiveness, about availability, about impossible, what can be happen through faith. It's how we turn to God. It's how we have a way to heaven. Now, I have created my own acrostic. It's not as good as these two, but it's my own. My Father who is God advises involvement toward holiness. That's the way I see faith. God gives me the advice of how to do and what to do and, and how to be involved in going toward being a holy person as God has taught us that he wants us to be. So th this is a great way for us to be able to understand and to do that. Now, you've seen three examples. I would like for you during the sermon today to write down your acrostic for faith. You have some room on the back of your worship guide, in the middle of your worship guide. you got cards before you. When you leave today from worship, I want you to say, I've got my own acrostic. And I was going to tell you to bring it back tonight and show it to me, but you can bring it back some other time, and, and I'd like to see what you come up with. So put it on a little index card and hand it to me the next time you see me because I would like to know what, what you think of faith, what acrostic it has, and we're going to talk about faith the remainder of the service today, but I want you to be able to pinpoint what you believe it is, and this is the way you can do it. it, it it's five simple words that impact what you believe about faith and how you respond to people who have the need for, for your life to be changed by the faith you have in Christ. All right, we're going to leave that up there so you remember where you are on your acrostic. And we're going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about what the source of our faith is. Have you ever thought about where our faith comes from? How, do, how, does, it, how does it come there? It's from God. Faith is from God. It, we talk about it sometimes being justification or sanctification. But Jesus is the center point of all of our faith. We need this availability that he gives us because we are sinners by nature and by choice. When sin entered into the world through Adam and Eve, we became sinners, all of mankind. But also we choose not to do the things God has asked us to do, and we choose sometimes to do the things that he's told us not to do, or we refuse to do the things he's told us to do. We ignore, we reject, we deny that God has a special plan for us. Unable to save ourselves, we have to turn to God. We have to turn to what he's doing. Faith is not just entering the right relationship. It is that for sure. But it doesn't stop there to where we just enter into the relationship with Christ. Faith is something that we live every day. Every day. Where does our faith come from? It's a gift from God into our lives that can make a difference for each one of us. How do we receive that faith? Well, we receive it through the strength that God gives us. Not only is he the source, he gives us that strength that we can take care of things. It's the power of God that delivers us from the penalty of sin. Do you know our faith changes our lives and, and it delivers us from that sin nature that we have, that sin that is within our lives, that sin that, that we're going to have to be responsible for because of what we have done. It also is the power of sin. It delivers us from the power that sin has over us. God's power is greater than any other power. 
I agree with what we're talking about, how we can pray for God and he seeks to take care of our problems for us because he is all-powerful. That's exactly what I, I see in, in, in this. Not only does he deliver us from the penalty of sin, he delivers us from the power of sin, so we no longer have to follow what he wants us to do or how he wants us to be, the, the evil one. But he also will deliver us from the presence of sin. One of the things I look forward to about going to heaven, because I've asked Christ into my life, into my heart, one of the things I look forward to is being away from the presence of evil and in the presence of the holy God, where there is no evil. And we're going to walk on streets of gold, we're going to open pearls doors, we're going to do all kind of things like that. But the main thing we're going to do is we're going to be with Jesus and we're going to be worshiping him and serving him and the presence that we go through is going to be wonderful. It's going to be a change in our lives. Who is included in this scope of faith? Who is, who does, who is faith for? I love this because Paul says up in verse 13, he says, uh, that I have planned to come to you and have been prevented thus far in order that I might obtain some fruit among you, even as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks, Gentiles, and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. For my part, I am eager to preach the gospel to you at Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation unto everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. That covers everybody. In another place, Paul says that the gospel is for men, women, boys, girls, Greek, Jew. It's for anybody that will allow him to come into their lives. So what do we do with this? How do we do it? If righteousness is available... If we all have need of it, if we all have the need that is there, if, it all, if it's given through faith, what, what are we doing? How are we doing that? What are we looking for? Faith, your acrostic for faith, should include your vision for what faith could do. Have you ever thought about a vision that you would have of, of what your life would be like in heaven? What your life would, could be like here on earth? Do you have a vision for what your faith can do for you? You know, I, I, I've often thought about that. In times of weakness, there are times that, that our faith is not as strong as it should be. In times of, uh, of despair and of grief, we have to handle the fact that God is there for us. Our vision of what God can do should be clearly implanted in our hearts that we can see Christ and how much he, he does indeed love us. What value do we place on things that come from God? What value do we place on the, the, the living righteous by the righteous of God? What value do we place on the closeness to God through our faith? Is it something we take for granted or is it something we value very deeply? When I think about when people go through crises, as our pastor and his family are doing now, I think about when we go through that period of crises, we can depend upon our faith in God, that we can depend upon God to help us value what is happening to our lives. And one of the neat things is our victory. How do we win a victory? We win a victory by if it's in baseball, scoring more runs than somebody else. If it's in football, scoring more field goals, touchdowns than somebody else. If it's a victory in life, it is a way that we have of God removing the sin from our lives and changing us into becoming the person that we need to be. What is the victory we have when we place our faith in God? Victory, first of all, of living our lives in the present. Victory, most of all, of living our lives with God in heaven. 
there's a cross stitch piece that, that, that we have somewhere stored at our house that says something like this. Working for God doesn't have to pay much because the retirement plan for it is out of this world. Now, that may not be a direct quote, but that's semi-close. And, and that's really what it's all about. That's our victory. So, so how do we put faith together? How are you coming on your letter? How are you coming on, on, on the letter for L that talks about faith? How are you coming on the letter A? I, T, or H? Are, are you making progress? Have you thought of a, maybe one of the words? Uh, maybe two of the words? Well, let me tell you what, what really the summary of all that I've said today is. Where does your faith come from? It comes from a belief in God, right? By believing in God, we have faith. Believe, trust, those are similar words. And we believe that God can have the victory in our lives. We begin with, a, with an operation of faith that is the power of God moving within us. Do you feel his power? Have you thought about what word would begin with an elf that would be the origin of our, the beginning of our faith? What word could fit there? What operation of faith could we have? What is our outreach? All people have been created by God is for all people. How are we doing on getting the word out to all people? How, what's the letter in faith that we could use to encourage us to challenge other people to be there with them and to be there for them? What's the outcome of it? I don't know of a better word for age than heaven or holiness. Are, and it goes on and on. And you understand I said a better word, not words. But then when I get to one, I cannot stop. So my challenge for you is to get to more than one because God pardons our sins and walks with us each and every day. Three words in the New Testament that relate to salvation by faith. Justification talks about a courtroom. You know, I have been very fortunate. I've never had to go to court. I've never even got to go to be on the jury. Now, Paul, don't take that literally and, and, and sign me up for something, but, but yeah, but, but I haven't. But I can imagine what it must be like to be in a courtroom and you be justified, being made right, being wiped out, the sins that are there. And if we take that very seriously and very literally, we will understand that justification comes not only from the courtroom, but it comes from the slave market. It's called redemption, buying back a person who has been sold into slavery. It costs something to get that person back. It cost Hosea all he had to get Gomer back. It cost Jesus his shed blood for each of us to be able to have the opportunity to, to be part of Christ. And then there's the family that it talks about. Adoption. Adoption is a great thing. It changes people's lives and it makes a world of difference in how they respond to what Christ has done for each of them. Galatians, the third chapter, says, these words, now that no one is justified by the law before God, is evident, for the righteous man shall live by his faith. What a great way of phrasing this same statement. Have you ever asked Jesus to be Lord of your life? Have you ex ever expressed that you're putting your faith in him? 
You're putting your trust in him to save you. Have you ever prayed the sinner's prayer that just simply says, God, I'm a sinner. I have been disobedient to you. I have done things that are wrong. I know that. But today I want to correct that. I want to ask Jesus to be Lord of my life. I put my faith in you, Lord, to save me, to rescue me from sin. I put that before anything else, that you be Lord of my life. Are you willing to walk close to Jesus every day? See, that's the second question we must ask. Yes, first we must place our faith in Christ to save us. Yes, first we must call upon his name to save us. But then we have to walk with him every day. And you know, that's what I find is the more difficult thing, is to walk with Christ every day. Because there's so many things that lead us astray. But when we walk with Christ every day, it transforms our lives into us being the people that we need to be and that we should be. Do you need to serve Christ at this church? nominating committees going around, do you need to say yes to some positions? Do you need to approach them and say, God is calling me to serve him here. Put me somewhere where I can be of service to the Lord and to this church. Perhaps you need to, to serve him at this church by moving your membership here. You belong somewhere else, but this is your church. This is where you're going to make a difference in this community. This is where you're going to change this community for Christ. What are we doing about our need to serve him? You remember when I, we read from the responsive reading that we're to take up our cross and serve him, follow him, and we read that, and yet we go home and say, I should do that, but not today, not now, not at this time. And yet the time for us to do that is now. Do you know Christ is your Savior? Are you walking with him? Are you serving him? If not, today would be a good day to get those things straightened out and to get involved in it. Because you remember, it could be a slave market or a family or a courtroom that we're standing before the Lord in. And I am glad that I can say, I know whom I have believed, and I trust in him to save me, to redeem me, to sanctify me, to justify me, and someday I'll be glorified by being with him in heaven. That's the choices we must make. What are we going to do about our faith? How's your word looking? What does it look like? Do you have some letters filled in? I would like to know what they are at some point. But today, more than anything else, I would like for you to walk out of this church with an assurance of your salvation, a commitment to serve, and being united with us here to make a difference in our world. We're going to have a hymn of invitation. Our hymn of invitation is, is going to be simple. It's for you to come forward to pray, for you to come forward to have a part of the worship time. It's going to be for you to say, I want to belong here. I want to serve God here. Whatever you choose to do that God has called you to do. May we walk out of here saying, it is God's blessing that has changed us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we sing our hymn of invitation about your nail-scarred hand, may your spirit move in each heart and in each life. May you change the world for you. May you change the world that we live in make it more like you and Lord you do that one person at a time and let it begin with us whatever decision we need to make or we simply need to come 
to the front and pray. Thy will be done in Jesus' name. Amen.